like the recording is going to start soon. Like, suppose I'm not ready and, and I, oh, oh, whoa, huh, hello there. I am Codon. Welcome back. We are here to continue our coding sessions in Scratch. Yes, so welcome. Today we are continuing. This is session number two. We are continuing this scrolling background project. So be sure you're logged in. You can tell if you are, if you see your name. I'm logged in as 22coach underscore n as a student account so you can see what it looks like if you're building your own projects. And we will be coding in this studio, Creative Code Play. So don't worry if you don't have uh, the link you can find in the video description. And you can always ask to be a curator in the comments. Click on comments. So there is a link to getting to this studio in the video description below. So I welcome you to join us and just ask to be a curator. and It'll be easier to add your projects there. The two projects we will be using are down here. One is Tutorial Rabbits number two. So you would use that if you don't have your project from week number one for whatever reason. So I'm hoping that you are continuing from the session number one with your scrolling background project, but I will continue using this as an example, okay? And then also, we are going to be using this project, Remixable for Parallelism. It comes from the wonderful Harvard education team in the Getting Unstuck program. So we're gonna be kind of taking elements of this project. Whoa, try to do that with your elbow. Wow, I love this puppet. And I'm sorry, I'm a robot. My name is Kodan. And we're going to take elements of sprites and code in this project and put it over here into our continuing scrolling project. So let's get coding. All right. So step number one is going to be we're going to remix that tutorial rabbit number two project so just if you're doing it just look for that one from coach newton and what you would do is you would click on it i've done that and i'm going to just kind of show it here this is what it looks like tutorial rabbit number two and you're going to want to click on that remix you see that up there uh, the remix that'll create a copy of it so this is only if you don't have your own scrolling project i think it's best if you create your own for sure and then up here, you'll see the share button. Uh, I always recommend sharing right away so you don't forget. So you'll see I'm going to do that. And what that does is now you can add instructions and you can rename. Okay, so this is my own copy now. So I'm not going to call it Tutorial 2. I'm going to call it Rabbit on Mars. Surprise. Jump. That's what I'm going to call it, okay? And then later, we're going to add some things here in the instructions. So here we go. Let's dive into it. Let's see inside in the code. And so one of the first things I wanted to do was to show you if, well, we're going to, I'm going to add a surprise of the mother rabbit jumping. So what does our program do so far? We have some scrolling, and they're kind of running along. And I want to be able to have my rabbit jump up as if you're playing a game, and then it's going to capture an object or touch an object. And once it does that, you get a surprise. So that's the general theme. So I'm hoping you create your version of it as we go along. So I'm going to stop the code here. Now, one of the things is if I know I'm going to make my rabbit be jumping up and down and moving, I need to tell the computer to start in the starting location. So let's add that code right now. Okay, so hopefully, let's see, I'm going to expand this a little bit larger so you can see the blocks easier. Yay, I like that. So right down here, you'll be able to see there is a code in the motion blocks. One, two, three, four, five. This gives us the coordinates of where the mother rabbit is right now. So I'm going to use that block and drag it out. And I want, I'm going to pull this apart. I want the rabbit to go there in the very beginning, okay, because I know she's going to be moving here in a little bit. So I always want to have her in a starting location that we control. So think about that for any of your projects. Now, we're going to add some jumping. 
Now, what I like to use for the jumping code are these event blocks. See these yellow event blocks? Let's go check those out. And when you click on those, the second one down is already, hey, when you hit the space bar, bum -ba -da -ba, when you press the key, we're telling the computer to watch that space bar key. And when you see it pressed, bum -ba -da -bum, do something. Okay, so we want movement. Well, here's some clues of what kind of movement. Left and right is changing the X value of a coordinate for the rabbit. And Y moves it, there are these little arrows here, up and down, okay? So we're gonna be changing the Y because I want her to jump up and down. So let's go to motion and scroll down a little bit. See the scroll bar here? You can scroll this way. There are a lot of motion commands. And my other hint is when you look at looks, those also have lots of commands as well. Lots to scroll through. So just be aware that there may be some looks and motion commands that you can explore uh, and, and find, especially like these layer commands here. See that? That's like a little bit of a secret. Um, if you don't find those, it's a secret. So motion changing the X. So you see I'm scrolling down and here we go. I found it. There's a change X, which moves it left and right. You can set a number. I don't want that. Oh, I want to change the Y. That's what I'm going to be using. So let's grab it. I like to click on it and see. Oh, yeah, there you go. There's a jump of 10. Boom, 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 boom. And let's try repeating that multiple times with a control repeat block. 10 repeated 10 times. So that's 10 times 10. What is that? I'm going to click here to put her in the beginning. And if I click this, there's my... 10 times 10, 100 pixels. That's not as high as I want her to jump. Since she starts here, let's do maybe twice that. Let's give that a try. I'm gonna go 20 times 10. Now remember, in your own code, that's as high as I want her to jump. That's not too bad, I like that. That's the mom here. Uh, you could change these numbers here and make it smaller uh, so they're, the, the jumping is smoother. You play with the numbers, please, give it a try. Okay, that gets her up in the air. Yippee! Um, so I want her to say something. I want her to say, yeah, let's see when she jumps. Uh, she's happy. Yippee! So when I hit that space bar, she says, yippee! And then I need her to come down. So one of the easiest ways I like to do this is, I know I'm gonna use these blocks of code again. So rather than scrolling over here to this side, I'm going to right click, you see this? There's an option to duplicate. Da, da, da. Now, if I'm going up by jumps of 10 to go the opposite direction, how about a minus 10? So let's try. She goes up, and then if I block the same amount, down. Let's give it a try. Green flag, it's jumping, space bar, boom, yippee, and she jumps down. Look at that. Yay, I like that. All right. Go, mom, go. Now, I don't want the yippee to stay there forever. So you'll notice I use this block that says something, but I have to tell the computer to blank it out. So I need to say nothing. And that kind of takes out the text. Now, what I'd like to do is do that while she gets to the top. So it's up to you. What does your rabbit say? Do you play a sound? I like that idea. Here we go. Boom, yippee. And you'll notice when she gets to the top, I stuck in this blank save command, and that way it blanks it out. And on the way down, she doesn't say anything. Uh, I'm going to add a simple sound because I think sound is so important for any kind of game you've ever played. So this is going to be these kind of, I don't know, pinkish. I like to say pink, but my colors are not 100% accurate for a robot like me. So blame Coach Newton. He programmed all of my code. Everything is his responsibility. How's that? So good and bad. How's that sound? So I'm going to use this little pop sound for now, just because it's there by default. Uh, and I'm just going to say, start that pop sound and play that uh, whenever I hit the space key. So let's do that in the very beginning. What do you think? So we're kind of giving the computer some orders here. Here we go. Let's see how that works. Oh, I heard that light pop. Did you hear it? There you go. I kind of like it. It's like nice feedback, and you can add whatever sounds you want. Yippee. All right, so now we have our jumping, scrolling background, and the baby rabbits chasing mom. 
Go, Mom, go. All right, so now let's add the object we want to be caught. So I'm going to stop. That means we need a new sprite. Let's see. Pick something that's animated to fly is what I'd like to do. So maybe she's trying to catch a bat. I've done butterflies before. Oh, there's the flying scratch cat. Oh, that might not be a bad idea. Hmm, I'll think about that. I'm looking for a different one. We've done pterodactyl flying. Ooh, how about that? A dinosaur on Mars. Ooh, I kind of like that surprise theme. It follows the thought that I've been having. So I'm going to pick this dinosaur. Okay, and scroll down. And one of the things I want to do is check out the costumes that it has. So if you look up here, you see the word costumes. There's code all the way up top. And then there's costumes, and then there's sounds, those three tabs. Let's go and click on the costumes, because we'd like to explore if the costumes that we have, there we are, see, costumes, sounds, so costumes. I have one costume for the dinosaur like this, one with the head, one with the wings flapping, one with the wings back up, it's kind of yelling, and then there's this costume. Hmm, I don't really want that one because it doesn't fit my animation that I want. I kind of want just the flying animation parts. And I like the head movement, but this doesn't fit the animation. So this would be good if maybe I had the dinosaur sitting on a tree or the ground somewhere and then took off. But for my automatic flying animation, I'm going to get rid of it. So I'm just going to click that trash can. OK, we have our four costumes. Let's go back to the code, to the code. Here we go. Code, events. When the green flag is clicked, I want my dinosaur to go to a starting location. So here, I'm going to kind of drag it. It's always easier to kind of drag it here. And it's a little bit big. I want it to be smaller. So let's check out again um, some of the looks and check out if we can fix the size of the dinosaur to something that we'd like. And this is, oh, there it is. Look, bum, ba, da, ba, change size by. So set size. Let's set the size. Right now it's 100. Let's try five. Oh, it disappeared. Too small. Doesn't work. How about 10? I don't know. How big do you want yours to be? I'm going to make my object 40. Oh, maybe let's try 50. Remember, you control the code so you can add all sorts of special effects. So I'm going to set the size to 50, uh, and I'm always going to have it start here. And I want to have it fly back and forth, OK? So if that's my starting location, we've already talked about this block. We've dragged it to the starting location, and the x and y coordinates are already updated. So here we go. We've got it, and I can jump. Hey, it's not flying. We needed to go back and forth. So we need some movement. Let's make our flying dinosaur move by 10 steps. And let's add this control. Let's see this control block that it goes moving forever. Forever, you notice I put it inside. And oh, oh it went right off the screen. OK, let's do one more thing. We need this cool block up here. It's under blue and motion. And you slide down, keep scrolling. Here it is. Dun, 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 dun. If on edge, see this one? Bounce. So that's a nice decision we're telling the computer to make. If you've reached an edge, please bounce back. Let's put that inside. So it moves and bounces. Whoa, I like it so far, but I don't have any flapping. And it flips upside down. Well. Guess what? Right below that command, if you take a look here, there's this block. It tells you for your sprites that you're adding, depending on your story, sometimes you don't want a sprite to rotate. So in this case, there are three options. Left, right, don't rotate. If I click that, it never rotates. Or rotate left and right only. I'm going to do left and right. So that way his head does kind of change direction. So I'm setting a rotation style and telling it what size. So this is part of initialization in computer science. 
you got to tell all the racers where the starting line is, and you have to remind the computer every time. So on your marks, get set, right? On your marks, we have to initialize where everybody starts, especially if they're going to be moving around. Okay, so if we touch all this together, we have something missing. My dinosaur is not animated because it's sticking with just that one costume. So let's fix that over here under looks. And there's a nice command here. You could tell these commands tell the dinosaur exactly which costume you want. Maybe there's a costume you want at the very beginning. So you can tell it maybe this one or that one, or I'm going to have the dinosaur. I think dinosaur 4D3D is his mouth open. I'm going to always have him start with that costume. But in my code, of the forever loop, I added a change of costume over and over and over. Let's try that. Whoa, I like the flying, but his flapping is happening way too fast. So I need to slow the visuals down because the computer is so fast. And we actually have to tell it to slow down sometimes and wait so our eyes can see the changes. And if you notice, here is our wait command. It's in the control blocks, and we can tell the computer how long to wait. So let's try one second. Actually, let's, I'm going to put it in order like this. I'm going to say move and wait one second. And if I click just this block of code, we can test it. Wow, you can see him flopping. One second, one second. That's too slow. I want him to go faster, so I need to wait less time. What's less than a second? How about 0.5? That's half a second. 0.4, four tenths of a second. 0 0.3, 0 0.2, kind of like that. 0.1. I want him to be pretty quick. 0 0.05. Well, I think I might stick with the 0.1. Sometimes I like my animations at 0 0.2, 0 0.25. Depends what you're doing. This one I like. Sometimes you need a slow animation for a dance contest. Who knows? This one's not bad. I like my flying dinosaur. Okay, so here we go. Let's play the whole thing. Ba -ba -da -ba -da, yippee! Oh, she got him. What? What happened? Nothing happened. We have to tell the computer we want something to happen. This is where we want a surprise when the rabbit does. Say yippee and touch the pterodactyl. So we can tell computers. If you sense that two objects have touched, or a color has been touched, or all sorts of different conditions, in this condition, I want if my rabbit touches the pterodactyl, dinosaur three sprite, in this case, I call it the pterodactyl, but it's labeled dinosaur three, I want something to happen. Okay, where do we put that code? Uh, we could put it in the mother hair. Or I say, if the mother hair touches the pterodactyl, um, I have this code here for you to look. Let's put it with the pterodactyl, just for fun this time. Okay, in the pterodactyl, so I'm going to start shrinking some of the code and moving this down. This is the code that makes it move. But at the same time, in parallel, I want the pterodactyl to be checking if it touches the mother hair. So we need another event block. Parallel, the computer's doing all of this stuff at the same time it's going to be doing this. So I'm going to go ahead and expand the blocks and leave these. I'll, sh I'll spread these out later. Let's make some room here for the new code. So at the same time, I need the computer to be checking for this condition. Now, all of you make so many decisions. The computer makes a decision with the if something's true, then I want you to do something. Okay. Let's grab that block. So if, what is it we want to be true? If it senses, hey, look, there's a sensing block right here. Sensing lots of blocks of code telling the computer what to do. You can say if it's touching a color or if two colors happen to be touching each other. You can check for distances. You can make it ask questions. We're going to use this first one for now. You see the six sides? And then you'll notice over here, the if also has a six-sided opening for you to put inside. That's how you know, hmm, I can put this decision here. So we want that first block, if touching. Now, we don't want to decide if you see these little arrows. You notice those. You can always kind of 
um, use multiple options whenever you see this little kind of inverted arrow that tells you there are multiple things that you can choose from in the command. And so if I click there, you'll see, oh, I can say, if touching mom hair, look at that. And then if I drag this inside, you'll notice it turns white right there and it goes inside. So now we've had the computer checking on this condition. Is it true? Is it touching if the pterodactyl is touching the mom hair? I want a surprise to happen and I want a sound to play. So let's, let's uh, play, I'm not going to play pop. Let's add a new sound. Now remember I told you about the tabs up here. There's a sound tab we're going to use right up here. Sound, and we're going to add our own sound for fun. Instead of pop, we're going to go way down here and choose a sound from the Scratch library. There are so many Scratch sounds to choose from. I love it. Okay, let's do, how about an animal effect? Uh, chirp, quack, goose, um, the moo. The moo is kind of funny. I'll do a squawk. I picked squawk, and now you notice I have two sounds to choose from. I have the original pop, squawk, and you can always add more into this little mini library. Let's go back to the code, and you'll notice, remember that little pull-down arrow I talked about? Now I have an option. I could do a squawk sound, or I could record my own sound. So have fun with that, too. Play the squawk sound if you're touching the mom here. And remember, we're going to add a surprise from that other project as well. So this, comp, this project is getting more and more interesting. OK, if we do this and I click the green flag, the computer did this check so fast. Is it true? Is the flying dinosaur touching the mom here? It did it right away. As soon as I click the green flag, and it's not true. So it's waiting here, and we have no other command. So it's done. So if I jump and I actually touch the pterodactyl, nothing happens because it did that check right away. So the computer is so fast, we need to tell it to do it over and over and over and over. And many of you will remember the control blocks here. The forever loop is a great way to have the computer do something over and over and over. So let's drag that here. And inside the forever, we want it to be checking if this is true. Is it true? Is it touching? Is it touching? Is it touching? Is it touching? Right. And it's forever checking. At the same time, it's doing all these other things like moving and fly. OK, let's try. If it touches, oh, did you hear the squawk? No squawk. Let's see if it touches. Ah, oh, played the squawk. Yay, it's working so far. So I've kind of got a nice scrolling game. And I've got a flying pterodactyl. And you can see where you can have a nice story. So this is more of a story. I'm not keeping score or anything. But it squawks if it touches and it tries to get away. OK, now let's add the surprise. Not only I wanted to have it squawk, I wanted to have my screen burst into some other sprites. So let's see. I'm going to shrink this down a little bit for now. And I wanted to show you down here how we have a lot of sprites already. We have the mom here, the baby here, the scrolling background number one, scrolling background number two the trees in the front, and the flying dinosaur. Now we're going to add our surprise into something that we haven't really talked about that much. But down here is a great, I don't, can't say secret, but it's not known by many new scratch coders. It's called the backpack, just like you have a backpack uh, for school, for carrying things, for hiking. Lots of people use backpacks. Let's click on that word. And again, I'll show you down here. It says backpack. It doesn't look like it might do anything, but try clicking on it. And bum ba dum bum, it's loading. Yikes, I have some stuff in there before. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to delete those. I'm right clicking and deleting because I want to show you how I got those here. So if you've never used your backpack before, yours will say backpack is empty. And here's where the other project I talked about is going to get used, OK? so. Um, let's go back up to here, and I'll show you. Uh, it's called Remixable Parallelism, and I'll show you where it is in the studio. So back in the Creative Studio, 
I talked about the tutorial that I'm continuing that has a scrolling background. And here's the project we're going to give another remix for parallelism. So that's the project. Again, the links are in the video descriptor. So you can get to Creative Code Play and find these projects here. Just look for these um, in the studio. And once I do that, this is what it looks like. Remixable for parallelism. And I'm going to do a little remix up here. Click Remix makes my own copy of this wonderful work from the Getting Unstuck team at Harvard Education. So they have some notes and credits that you should read and just check it out. It has some good information in it. All right, I hope that all makes sense. I'm going to jump back out of the way. Let's do the remix. Here's my remix. I'm going to click it. Now, I started talking about, oh, now there's all sorts of cool. What does this project do? Let's try it. Green flag. Oh, every time I click the green flag, I have a bunch of balls and different colored stars appear. So I thought this effect was pretty cool. And this is also a remixable project. So you could play and create your own project based on this. I'd love to see that in the studio as well. I'm going to borrow this cool code. And when the, I was thinking, I want this explosion of color and objects to happen as a surprise when the mother hair touches the pterodactyl. So that's what we're going to do. And I wanted to borrow the sprite and the code for the sprite for both of these. The star, and it uses something called cloning. So I'm not going to talk about that in detail in this uh, video, but I encourage you to read this and see if you can figure it out. We'll do more cloning, very powerful and fun for graphics in our project. So you're going to be using these um, objects. Open up your backpack. My backpack is empty. I want the ball sprite and all of this wonderful code that goes with it that makes it explode on screen. Drag it. I just grab it and drag it. Look at it. I let go. Bump it a bum. It's there. And I'm doing the same with the star. Bump it a bum. Now it's in my backpack, right? Okay. Thank you very much, team. Uh, you can save this remix so you always have it. Uh, I have not shared it. You can share it if you want, if you're going to create something with it. Since I'm not going to create something right now with this project in its whole, uh, I just wanted the sprites in my backpack. And let's make sure we give credit to this team for the original um, um, sprites. Okay. So now I go back to my, my project with the scrolling background that we've been working on. And let's see, let's close the backpack and reopen it. And here's the power. So you can have multiple projects and then you can have art that you've created in a sprite. And you're like, oh, I've just spent all this time drawing Baby Yoda and I want to use it in another project. Well, guess what? You don't have to redraw it. You could carry and copy your sprite into your backpack. So, and it includes any code that you've added with it. So guess what? We wanted this sprite. I'm going to drag it into this project. There it is and the star as well. Yay! And I'm going to close my backpack so we can see the code a little bit better. All right, let's see. Hopefully that made sense. There's a lot there. Just pause the video as you need to follow along. So now we have, I'm going to scroll down here, we have the ball and the star. And remember what happened when the green flag hit? They pop all over the screen. Well, that's not quite what I want to happen, right? I don't want the surprise until my condition is met, which is my mom rabbit says yippee and touches the pterodactyl. There's the squawk, but I want these balls and stars to appear only then. So let's stop and see if we can control the code. I'm going to the ball and let's see, I'm going to click equals. Oops, I kind of, there's some nice comments here. Uh, they encourage you other things you can do. Um, with this code. I'm going to leave these here if you want to play with them. I'm not using these blocks of code, but they're here to encourage you. I'm using this block of code, and it tells you what it does. It creates the clones, but I don't want it happening when the green flag is clicked. What I do want is for this sprite to not show up until it's time for the surprise. So let's hide it. And a lot of you may not have hidden sprites before. It's a purple looks command. 
towards the bottom. So you have to scroll, scroll, scroll. And there it is. You see that? Okay. It's over here uh, down. There's a show and a hide. So let's grab those blocks. And here we go. We've got a show. And can you guess why I bring both out? Think about it. If I hide a sprite and I don't have the show, what do you think the computer will do? It will follow my instructions. It will hide it. And when you want the surprise to pop out, nothing happens because it's hidden. That's because we have to tell the computer, guess what? I want you to show. Now let's click this code separately. There it is. So when I click the green flag, the ball's hidden. And then when I click it, it shows. Okay. All right. So I haven't yet told the computer when to show and pop up with the surprise. But I have told it to hide the ball. And we have to do the same for the star. Okay. I'm just doing the same thing. I'm hiding at the beginning, and I'm showing when my surprise happens. Now, we're going to use something here called messaging for the surprise. Let's go back to the code that says, hey, it's happened. The pterodactyl, the dinosaur three sprite, I had the condition that says, hey, if I get uh, the mother hair touches my sprite, play a squawk sound, I'm going to add one other thing called messaging. It's in the events. And this is where we tell, uh, we're going to send, broadcast a message. It's kind of like sending text or messages to someone. You broadcast a message to other sprites so they can do things. So for example, let's pick this broadcast. We're going to say not message one. We can call it what we want. So let's say new message and call it Surprise. That's my message name. So it says broadcast surprise. So this is tell the other sprites there's a surprise that's happened. It's happened. And I have to put that inside here because I only wanted to broadcast the surprise, not in the very beginning, if this is true. So two things are happening. There's a sound that plays and the broadcast surprise message goes out. Okay. Now we need to tell sprites that we want to react to the message. Well, that's the ball and the star. So here we are. If you look, there's also code that says, tell the computer to check. When you receive this broadcast message, in this case, the surprise, do a bunch of stuff. This is what we want it to do. And I want the star to do the same. When I receive surprise, show. Let's give this a try. Bum, bum, bum. I jump, squawk, and there's my surprise. Yippee. If I keep going, watch, I get more and more. Surprise. Whoa, I got a lot of stars. Now, there's something going on there. Why did I get so many stars? I'm going to let you work on figuring that out. And how would you fix that? And I'll give you a hint. The computer is really, really fast. So if the mother hair is touching pterodactyl, dinosaur sprite, and it hovers over it. It says, you're touching, you're touching. It's true, 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 true. So it could send lots of broadcasts. Now I can't even see the pterodactyl. This is kind of a whole other game and surprise. But here we go. You notice right in the beginning, I get my surprise. Yippee. And you could add more to this if you'd like as well. Okay. That's pretty good. This is kind of what I wanted to do. And let's save what we've got. I'm going to do save. I'm going to go to the project page. Green flag go. Let's add some instructions. Uh, um, use the space bar for the mother hair to jump. Try to touch the flying dino to get a surprise. Okay, so instructions are important because people won't know to hit the space bar if they play this program. So remember, your, your computer um, story needs to tell people how to interact with it if you have something to interact. Or if it's just a story, let them know. Say, play the green flag and watch the story and enjoy.
Uh, notes and credits. Well, remember, we borrowed from the Remixable Parallelism Project. So I would like to give them credit. And I'm going to click on that original one, right? And I can copy the link. I copy the link, go back to my rabbits. And I'm going to say thanks for the star and and ball sprites from that project. And this user, it's called Getting Unstuck. So if I click on they have a lot of cool stuff. So you can copy Getting Unstuck, Control C, and in Scratch, if you want to tag the user, you say the at sign, the at sign, and the name. So thanks for the stars and frights from getting unstuck and their project. So people know where I, I've, I got this cool code. And that way they get credit for it. Yay! All right, what do you think? Oh, one thing we're still missing. We need some kind of background music, right? There's hopping, there's Mars. Let's add some background music. So let's see inside. We'll do this quickly. One of the places that you can put music is anywhere in any of these sprites. But something we haven't done yet that I wanted to show you is um, here down in, what am I doing? Come on, code on, be careful. Uh, there's the stage. You see the stage all the way over there? I'm going to click on it. Stage. The stage can have code as well. So that's something for you to realize is we can tell the stage to do things separately. The one thing we can't tell the stage to do is you'll notice stage selected no motion blocks. So the stage can't be moved around, but you can do other things to it. Look at these blocks of code, right? Uh, we're gonna you can have the stage play sounds, which is what I want. So when my program starts, I like putting music background music on the stage because it's just sometimes easy to find and you can have other things happen so explore here you can have all sorts of things happen with the stage but we're doing something simple i want music to play forever in the background so remember that's a control and the forever loop and i want to put the sound inside of there now i don't want the pop sound that's not exactly the effect i want but I wanted to let you know that way down there in the sounds, uh, whoops, sorry, once we click the sounds tab, let's do that. If I click the sounds tab, now way down here, uh, you can choose a sound from the library. And I wanted you to look at loops. See the loops up here? So the loops are typically longer sounds. So if I put them inside of a forever loop, they'll kind of play. So there's kind of chill, dance magic, drive around, drum jam. I'll do dance slow for fun. If I clicked on it, I wanted to show you something else. These clips are different lengths of time of sounds. And this is a way to tell how long is this loop. 20.23 seconds. 20.23 seconds. The pop sound is 0.02. It's very short. But this dance uh, slow sound plays for 20 seconds. And I kind of like that. And there's like, uh, you can play with the different effects of it. And it changes a little bit. Nice. I like that choice. I'm going to put that. And you'll notice I have dance slow-mo as an option. And I told the people in the instructions that they can hit the space bar and say yippee. And the pterodactyl touches. There was my surprise. All right. So this was part two of our sessions. I hope you had a lot of fun. Uh, I wanted to show you what some students had made in that Creative Studio projects. Uh, I will share this in the studio as well. So if you want to see how I created this video, it's Rabbits on Mars Surprise Jump.
I just added it to the studio. So let's go take a look and refresh. And there it is. So make sure when you're doing and following along this video, you use your project from last week or this tutorial to one. And then this is the remix. And if you want to see what I created in this video, there it is, 22 Coach N. And these are projects that students made. So let's take a quick look at some of these. So press 7G. Oh, he's got instructions that say play, press any number. I'm going to get out of the way here a little bit. And you can change the volume. He added some keys for changing the volume. Very nice. And then I'm going up and down. Ooh, I could press zero to mute. I muted it. Um, and I have to avoid these eyeballs. What do they call it? Dodge the metal balls. Oh, I lose. No, the ball got me. All right. That was kind of fun. I like that. Thanks for putting that one in the studio as well. Um, this one was, oh, let me go to rabbits just running. Oh, I know this one. Oh, let's see. Uh, click the green flag. What will happen if you touch that butterfly? Jump, mute for M to mute, N to unmute. I love these instructions. I jumped. Oh, a rabbit says, woohoo. I love the background. And there's the butterfly. I did it. Yeah, nice. Oh, I love the flying butterfly. Woohoo. Oh, and I like how it erases the balls, too. Ah, added some code for erasing. Check that out. Awesome. And you'll notice I gave it a star uh, earlier. So I've been looking at these earlier. Good job. And let's see. I'm skipping this one because uh, this was uh, 144. was creating something for one of the other classmates. Wasn't that nice? But he asked me to play this one. Uh, created for Coach Newton. Boy, Coach Newton feels really lucky. I know that. I'll let them know, okay? And then you just hit play and enjoy. And uh, let's check it out. Whoa! Wow, look at that scrolling background. Wow, and some cool music, too. Wow, I love that. Nice job. Look at that. I love all the different ideas that everyone has for their projects. And we've got one more that was shared with us, Code Tiger Boy. Wow, the graphics already it says, thanks for watching the up arrow and higher sound down arrow. Oh, so you can uh, make the sound louder or lower with arrows, space for muting and unmuting, and side arrows for different pitches. Wow, let's check this out. Ooh, let, let me see if I can do this. I, can, uh, I feel like I'm walking along with the bear. Oh, I used the other arrow. Oh, apples. apples. Whoa, dragon animation, end game, no, it says in the bottom, oh, hello, it says hello, oh, I love it, I love it, nice job, nice job, I like it, I love the project students have shared in the studio, and some are still working on there, so I said, hey, if you want to share it in the video, you're welcome to, I'm really glad they did, again, we're creative code play sessions, this is video number two, and I just wanted to say, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and sharing some of the projects um, with people that they shared with us. It's kind of cool. I wanted to say bye. I am Codon. And thank you for watching. And we'll see you in future classes. Or you can watch our videos and see what you missed. Codon!